In my last few videos excluding the Game Theory reaction, we did summaries on the three stories in the Bobby Dots conclusion, the fifth Tales from the Pizzaplex book. However, there is just one more story that we need to summarize, the epilogue. This is the fifth Tales from the Pizzaplex epilogue, and in the last one we saw Joel and Wade die, and the remaining four trying to fix a radio to help get them out of the pizza place. So what's gonna happen in this one? Well, let's find out. Lucia and Kelly had finally figured out how to fix the radio. They got it working, but all they could hear from the other end was static. Deep within the static, however, they could just hear a voice. The words were too difficult to make out, but it was a voice. Kelly adjusted the antenna to try to get a better signal, and they could vaguely make out the words, We are in pizzeria. The radio began getting a bit clearer, and the person on the other end said that they were trapped in the old pizzeria in a room behind the stage. Lucy asked who they were, how they got there, and where exactly the room was, but the voice didn't answer. Instead, they only said the word, help. Someone seemed to be down there with them. Kelly insisted that they need to, needed to find them and help them, and Adrian said that they needed to find Joel and Wade too. But because the voice was so distorted, it was possible that they were talking to Joel and Wade right now. Who knows? Besides us. So they argued a bit about who it could have been until they decided that they should just go check it out. They made it to the backstage area unscathed, and the mimic endo didn't seem to be nearby. Jace noticed an outline on the wall that seemed to be a hidden door. Adrian knocked on the door to see if someone was inside, and he got a knock back. Adrian searched for a latch to open the door, and then it opened a few inches. The teenagers all went inside and saw it was empty of any people. The only thing inside this small room was a collection of costumes like the ones in the parts and service room. Adrian asked if anyone was in here, but instead of an answer, the mimic in a monkey costume jumped out, shutting off the lights and making its signature hiss and rasp sounds. Lucia grabbed Adrian and pulled him back just in time to avoid the mimic lunging at Adrian's arm. Switching to Adrian's perspective, the mimic had actually touched his arm a bit, and only when they barricaded themselves in the office did they realize that Adrian's arm was bleeding pretty bad. The mimic seemed to have disappeared, luckily it wasn't all that fast. Lucia and Kelly patched up his arm with the first aid kit, and then Adrian said that they needed to find Joel and Wade. He knew everyone, including Adrian himself, could see their corpses in their minds, but they knew that they had to find them. Adrian knew that they couldn't go out the door they came in because the mimic could be out there waiting for them, so instead he decided he and Jace would go through the vent. Meanwhile, Kelly and Lucia would work more at the radio to try to find an actual person this time, and also look more at the manual to figure out what else the mimic can do. We switch over to Jace's perspective, who doesn't like that they're doing this, but he was doing it anyway. The vents were pretty big and relatively clean, but they were also warping up, being a bit unstable. The vents were pretty big and relatively clean, but they were also warping, being a bit unstable. They crawled through the ducts, but stopped when they saw something moving through the vent cover ahead of them. It was the Mimic. It seemed to look into the vent, but ignored the vent and just passed by. Adrian and Jace ended up in the employee break room rather than the systems room due to an air handler unit blocking the way there. So they got out of the vent and headed through the hall towards the systems room, which was where Joel and Wade had said that they wanted to go. When they went in, they found the remains of both Wade and Joel all over the floor and the furnace. Jace was too disgusted to poke around, but Adrian was able to keep it together. He realized Joel and Wade were trying to escape through the furnace, but there was the fan in the way, so Adrian believed that if they could turn off the fan, then they could escape. The exact same idea Joel had, and look how it turned out for him. We cut back to the perspective of Lucia, still in the room with Kelly, and trying to figure out the radio. Lucia had read through the entire manual with the Mimic, and the only thing she'd learned was that there was a deactivation switch on the back of its neck, but it would be pretty difficult to even use that while trying to escape the thing. So it wasn't really that useful. She looked through the office desk drawers and didn't find anything else about the Mimic, but she did find a key labeled storage. Opposite the systems room, there had been a room with a deadbolt, and Lucia wondered if that was what this key was for. She didn't really know, but she put the key in her pocket just in case. We cut back to Jace's perspective. After finding the fan, they began searching around to try and find the control panel for the fan. They ended up finding it, but it did nothing. The fan remained on. So they began looking around the rest of the pizzeria to try and find another way to start shut off the fan. They found a fuse box, but none of the switches in the box did anything to the fan either. As they were searching, they found the Mimic rising up from a pile of endoskeletons, now inside a dog costume. It began chasing them, but luckily they were faster than it, but it was still after them. They managed to get far enough away that they could hide behind some pinball machines in the arcade, and Adrian told Jace that they could probably sneak onto this small stage and slip behind the stage curtains before the Mimic could notice. 
They were able to do so, and the mimic seemed to go in the direction of the lobby, as the dining room lights were back on while the lobby looked dark. Adrian and Jace then ran down the hall as fast as they could to the systems room. We cut back to Adrian's perspective as he's closing the door to the systems room, but first checks if the mimic is following them, but he can't tell. However, the dining room lights were dark again, so the mimic was most likely coming after them. From the small stage, Adrian had grabbed a metal leg, and he brought it to the systems room to try and shove it into the fan to try and stop it. Adrian didn't think he'd be able to fit through it if it were to work, but Jace would be able to. Adrian hopped into the furnace and grabbed the metal leg, but a rasp and a hiss came from outside the system's room door, and the lights began to flicker. There wasn't enough time for Jace to get into the furnace, so Adrian told him to hide, and he did. Adrian tried to stop the fan with the endoskeleton leg, but it didn't work. The fan was too powerful. It was sparking, and it wouldn't stop. Adrian fell down the shaft, shooting out through the furnace door, and straight into the arms of the Mimic, who had been waiting outside the furnace the whole time. Cutting back to Jace's perspective, he was hearing all of this go down. He heard Adrian yell when he fell down the furnace chute, but he heard him scream really loudly right after. Jace knew that the Mimic had Adrian, and all he could do was stay in his hiding place and listen to Adrian die as the epilogue ends right there. Personally, I enjoyed this epilogue, but I, I still think that the first, third, and fourth were all better. But this one was still good. But I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about this epilogue? Did you enjoy it? Let me know in the comments, and if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to. I wish I could say I was done with the book videos until Nexi comes out, but I still have to read the second Fazer Fights graphic novel. A video on that should be out within the next few days, but I'm going to end the video there, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys!